Hello and welcome to a Geeky Bit tutorial. On today's tutorial, we will be talking about how to assemble a blue SCSI. So let's talk about what you'll need to get started. First, you'll need some solder. Next, we'll need a soldering iron. Then we'll want some flux like this right here, but not this kind of flux right here. Optionally, I think a station like this would actually be very helpful if you happen to have one. And if you're trying to go the extra mile, an automatic shutoff timer is great. Now let's talk about the parts you'll need. You should either have these in a kit you've ordered or as parts you've ordered to assemble your own. First we have the PCBs. Next we have the SD card slot. You will only get one but this is a multi-pack package. Next we have the diodes and the jumpers and pins. Here's your power connector. Here is your 330 resistor pack. Here is your 220 resistor pack. Here is your blue pill. Here is a 50 pin SCSI connector. Now as you can see here, I've bought parts to build several of these for myself. Okay, just to reiterate, these are all the parts we'll need. We will need these diodes right here. We will need this power connector right here. We will need these 220 resistor packs. And then we will also need next the 330 resistor pack. Oh, I dropped one. And then we will need the SCSI connector. And then let's move the SD card slot. Let's take away the blue pill. And then let's take away our jumpers and pins. So we will work with the board first and that SD card slot. So first let's talk about attaching that SD card slot. There are a few ways to do it. There's the drag method, which is talked on the GitHub and a lot of people use. Then there is also a few other ways to do it. I'm going to demonstrate a way that requires a little more finesse with a soldering iron and a special finer type of solder. If you do not trust yourself with the method I am showing here or are concerned that you might not be able to do it, again, I do recommend the drag method. The GitHub does talk about it. However, you can also look up several YouTube videos of people demonstrating how to use the drag method to solder surface mounted components. One other thing to do it the way I'm talking about that you will need is captain tape. The tape I'm referring to starts with a K, and there will be links in the description to any items I recommend you need above and beyond what is included in a kit for the Blue SCSI. Alright, let's get started. As you can see here, this is how you attach the captain tape. Okay, as you can see, here is a close-up image of the captain tape and the SD card slot where it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit each one of these pads that anchors the SD card slot down. Let me just adjust it in place and I will start from this corner right here. And as you can see here, I'm hitting it with this and the solder just goes in as I'm attaching it. And then we will move on to the next leg after I get it done. Just need to get a little more solder on it. There we go. I like that. And then we will hit the, well, looks like it needs just a touch more. There we go. All right. Now we will go ahead and hit the next leg after we get that situated there. Okay, as you can see, I have attached all of the supports. You take a look there, looks really nice. Now, after this is done, I'm going to go ahead and hit up these pins right here. Again, this is very delicate. Well, let me just position it where I feel comfortable. We'll have it back in frame in a moment here. Let me just move it up. There we go. And then we just take the solder like this. I put it on there. And then we just give it a moment here. I need to get my soldering iron in a little better position. I'm not looking through this like you guys are. So just a moment here. Just get things ready. And here we go. There we got it in place now. You just, oh my goodness, I bumped my thing. Let me get it back into position. There we go. All right. Let me just get this one in position. Attach that there. And attach this one here. Okay. I'll put a little more solder on it. We just continue down until we have all of these in place. We're almost done. As you can see, this is really easy. Uh, a lot of people like the drag method, but I like using ultra fine solder. And as you can see, I'm done. All done. 
Now that we've seen how to attach the SD card slot, let's move on to our next thing, which is the resistor packs. Now this part is really important. Those resistor packs have two different values and they need to go in a very specific way for each resistor pack. Okay, let's talk about the resistor packs real quick here. As you can see, we want this dot right here to be right next to this little peg right here when we do these. We also want to make sure our values are set correctly. Okay, so each of the rows that we see here where the resistors will go actually have the value that we want. So the front row is 220 and the back row is 330. And the front row being facing the SD card to be specific or where the blue SCSI will be. Okay, let's go ahead and put our resistor pack in making sure the dot faces the square peg and making sure our values are correct. Yes, that is indeed the 220 value. Let me get the other resistor and make sure I'm putting it in the right way. The dot being where the square peg is. Then once I have this done, as you can see, I'm going to flip it over. And then once I have it flipped over, I am going to go ahead and touch it up one spot on each end of each resistor pack so that I can adjust to make sure they're straight. Okay, here I go. I'm just hitting it now. Getting the other leg of this resistor pack. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get this second resistor pack here. There's that leg. And then there's that leg. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it in my hand and I'm going to reheat the solder and maneuver it so that I have them lining up in a mostly straight position. So I got that side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this side. And then after I get it done, I'll take a look and see how I feel about it. Uh, it looks pretty good. Not, not quite from that angle, there we go. Now let's do the other one. And just a moment here, there we go. And uh, then let's see about this side. And I feel I'm pretty confident about that. There we go, it's pretty straight. Let's just double check this other side. There we go, that looks much better. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hit all the pins here. So I'm gonna go from this direction so I don't melt the solder on the one pin before I get a couple pins. So then that way everything holds itself in place. Now this is really quick here. So I'm doing it in real time so you can see. No high speed camera magic tricks here, just retouching a couple pins. And I wanna make sure these are definitely thoroughly coated in solder so that they are not having any cold solder connections. I think that's pretty decent. I might need to hit one pin. Let me just take a look here. Yep, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I think I might hit a pin here. Yep, this one right here. Just touch that up a little bit more. All right, now on to the next resistor pack. So I'm just taking a look, making sure everything looks nice. And then we will go ahead and hit it up real quick here. Yep. Still straight. All right. Okay. Here's this pin, next pin, and then the next pin. We're almost done with this resistor pack here. Just need a little more solder. There we go. Just a couple more pins to go. All right. Looks like I got them. Okay, let's get our next set of resistor packs in place. Again, making sure we line up the dot and making sure it is the right value, 330. And lining up the dot to the square pegs on both sides. Now let's flip it over, drop it down. Hopefully I do it right. It's, it's a lot harder to do once you have the second set. Oh, looks like they fell out. This happens sometimes. Uh, you can use captain tape, but I'm just... Uh, going to put them in by hand and then we will have it done here and just making sure I got everything lined up and there we go now just to be careful just setting it down 
And let's see. On the edge here, maybe that'll help me out. And I think I got it. There we go. Awesome. All right. So we pretty much do the same thing here. So I'm just going to jump ahead. And there we go. That's what it looks like all soldered up. Let me just double check here. See if I'm comfortable with it. And there are a couple spots that needed to be touched up. I'm just going to touch all those spots up real quick. There's that one. Now, I think that actually might be it. So, there we go. We're good. Okay, next, let's talk about the diodes. Okay, as we can see, the white lines on our diodes will line up with the little white line on the silk screen of the board. So, let me just get them right in there. Okay, just pushing the diode through there. Let me just get the pin to line up. There we go, just like that. And then we will bend out the legs so that it works uh, by holding itself in. And then let's get the other one bent up so that we can put it in as well. All right, and then once we have it pushed through, we just bend out the legs on that one. And then we will be ready to solder once that's all done. All right. So that's pretty much easy. So let me go ahead and just hit them up with a little bit of solder. All right, let me just line everything up here. And there we go, there's that leg. And then this leg. And then this leg. All right, let's get a little bit of solder on there. There we go. And then this last leg right here. Oh no. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and we're done. We just need to clip the excess off. So I'll be doing that real quick here. Let me just show you how they look. All right. And okay, everything looks great. So now that they're clipped, let's just re-hit them with solder to ensure we do not have any cold solder joints. And just touching that up and we're done. Okay, for our next step, let's move on to the pins. So I'm just gonna fit the blue pill in here uh, just so we have some extra height when we go to put our pins in place. And then that way, hopefully the board will rest a little more even while we're putting our pins in place. So first we want to chop up the pins because they are not all in a row like they have come. So we'll snip the uh, jumpered ones. So we'll snip that. So we have one jumper and then we'll snip the other one. So we have our other jumper and then we will put them in place. This is the first pin. This is the orientation we want to go as there is one square per each line. Then now that we've got them both in there, we just set the board upside down. I'm going to use these pair of tweezers to help level it out. And then we will solder in one leg each so that we can adjust the pins so that they are straight or fairly straight anyways. And let's take a look, see what we need to do. All right. They are a little off, so we'll just adjust them. There we go. Is that better? Oh, not quite. Let me just fix this one. And there we go. They're pretty straight now. So then we will just hit the other legs with some solder and these pins will be done. There we go. That leg's done and then that leg's done. Okay, here's our power cable. This is, well, our power plug, I should say. This is the next set of pins we will hook up. I've already removed the blue pill as we don't need it to stabilize anymore. So let's hit this pin right here and get some solder on that. And then 
Let me just double do that. And then the next leg. All right, now let's make sure that we're right. Wow. First go. Awesome. So looks pretty straight. And uh, just double checking here. Yeah, it's good. So let's just go ahead and hit the other two pins. There's that one. And then this one. And then that's done. Okay, now for the last four set of pins, I'll put them in. And then we'll hit the two ends so we can adjust anything if we need to to make sure it's straight. So there's pin one. Then there's our second pin that we're hitting. These aren't the order of the, the pins actually are in. All right, let's take a look here. Looks pretty decent. Just double checking here. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. I may hit it, I don't know. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and go with that. I think that's decent enough. And then there we go. Now we're done with the pins. All right, now for the SCSI pins. Got it all lined up, flipped over. We're going to hit one corner each. Let me just fell out here. Let me get it re-put back in. And then I think I'm going to need to use a pair of tweezers to stabilize one side. Yep. All right, so we'll hit this pin right here. And then we will hit this pin right here. And then we will adjust it to make sure it is flat pressed against the board. So I'll just hold it there, make sure we got there. Do that one there. Take a look at it. All right, looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna go through and hit all of the pins. It's a pretty easy process, but it does take up a little bit of time. As you can see, I'm making pretty quick work of it, but you don't need to see this whole process, so we'll just go ahead and skip ahead here. And there we go, we're done. And it looks pretty decent. Yep, I'm pretty confident with that. Make sure the 50 pin SCSI connector notch lines up with the 50 pin SCSI connector notch on the silk screen of the board as well. All right, we're almost done. We just need to hook up the blue pill and we'll be done. One really important thing to note is the micro USB should be on the same side as the SD card slot. And right here is what it should look like when you have it aligned correctly. Okay, let's go ahead and hit a corner of each of the legs so we'll get this pin right here and then we'll get this now well, let's hit it up a little bit more it wasn't much slaughter all right need to get that smoke out of my way now let's get this leg okay let's inspect it and make sure that it's level yep looks good okay so i'm not happy with how the solder is going on these legs so I'm going to hit all the legs with just a bit of flux to help ensure that the solder goes on the legs and the pins. Well, the pin sockets, I should say. All right. Now we got all that flux on there. Let's just go ahead and hit these pins. We'll do this one. I'll show you me doing a couple, but you don't need to see me doing all of them, so we'll just zip on past that and there we go that's our last few pins if you were following along you should notice we have fully assembled our board now and let's take a quick look at our finished product here we go of course we went to all of that work so we wouldn't be done if we didn't also test it okay so it's lighting up and it's booting mac os okay you followed along but unfortunately yours for some reason isn't working so let's do a couple troubleshooting steps the first three things we want to be on the lookout for are cold solder joints solder bridges or mist 
solder spots. The next thing I would do is go back and review this video and to make sure you put all the components in the correct way around and in the correct location. Lastly, if you have any other issues that we didn't cover in this video and your unit isn't starting, I would recommend checking out the Retro SCSI Discord as they will be able to help with different issues that might have happened. The troubleshooting section of the GitHub for the Blue SCSI is also a great resource as well. Also, I highly recommend using an image file that is known working. I believe the GitHub does have links to several of those. I hope this video was a big help in you building your own blue SCSI kit or the assembly of parts you sourced yourself. I also hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And if you did, feel free to click that like button. And if you aren't subscribed so already, feel free to do so. And if you'd like to get notifications of future videos, click that bell button.